Hello, Musto006, we're back again for Shovel Knight Part 5, and what am I doing here? Well, the mess up with the audio, where I somehow managed to delete the file, uh, wasn't the only audio screw up I made. On um, one occasion, while going through Treasure Knight stage, as you see here, I didn't ha I realised I forgot to press the record button on my dictaphone altogether, so I had no audio recording. So, thankfully, I managed to, I, well, halfway through the level, I'd realised what I'd done, so I was able to quit to the main menu and lose all my progress, so thankfully all the gold and the relic I collected and everything like that didn't count, so I was able to reset the game, if you will. But, as you just saw there, I got a feat to Master Angler for successfully fishing in five spots, and if I just replayed the level again and done exactly the same thing, I'd already got the achievement and I wouldn't get it again. So I put that little bit up there at the front, obviously. I kept the, I had the wherewithal to keep the video recording, um, of me getting the achievement, but yeah, there was no audio because I'd done screwed up again. <laughs> uh, you just saw me there on the on the map, uh, uh, just kind of uh, show off the three knights that I could fight and the locked gates. So we had um, a mole knight, a plague knight, and uh, obviously the one that I've, but it should have been abundantly obvious that I was going to go to from the first 20 seconds of the video, Treasure Knight. And, as in any kind of platformer, or certainly any good Mega Man type game, which this clearly is riffing a little bit off of, we have a water level. Uh, and I should probably say that you're probably going to notice quite a bit of lag in this level, probably more than most. Um, I, as far as I'm aware, the, this actual length of the video is, in fact, the entire stage. I don't believe I do actually anything else after this level, so yeah, it's a long one. Probably a long one normally, but I think the lag really kind of took over here. Uh, and here you can see, here's probably where I was fishing for about the third or fourth time um, <laughs> when I went through the original time, but uh, yeah, what we've got here, oh we've got a uh, trowel pull again and I believe that I must have uh, filled up my chalices so I don't have any. Yeah. Anyway. We've probably seen the kind of the gimmick here, I do love by the way the, um, the floating away um, gems and everything from digging up the dirt piles here underwater, I think that's a very very nice touch. Um, you've probably kind of seen, you know, one of the um, stage gimmicks already, which is these shell enemies. Um, some of them you can kill, some of them, some of them you just kind of hit and they go, you know, go into a shell and just kind of stay there. They will pop out after a certain point of time. Um, some of these ones actually you can't um, uh, kill at all or hit as far as I'm aware. You can polo off them, but um, you don't actually kill them. Um, you can also jump foolishly and land right on one, yay. Um, but the ones where they do crawl into the shell, if you whack them again, they'll kind of fly around the room. And that's a very good opportunity to you know, break apart some of the blocks, um, particularly the ones that were blocking off this area here. You know, the, the blocks were kind of too high for really Shovel Knight to be able to actually get at them with his shovel. So, you know, um, you can see now actually. Making these things whiz around the room and, destroy, and destroying blocks is a, is a good idea. They can also do more than just destroy blocks, they can also deal direct damage to your enemies, and they're very, very good in this situation for dealing with this really annoying place, Knight. And I hate these kind of fights with those throwing anchors. Oh, they are a pain in the neck, those ones. Watch out. Um, there are the spikes there, obviously. Um, you move slow enough down, obviously, the, gra the, gra the physics of the water are such that. Um, you fall at a slower rate, so um, even though there are spikes there to drop on, you should have more than enough time when you initially drop on the screen to realise, oh, I need to move out of the way. You do get these kind of eels kind of popping up uh, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, which you do have to be kind of uh, wary of. Uh, and here, there's a little area off to the left, you can see the tell for the breakable areas on this side is kind of a little outline of a fossil or a shell. And we actually come back to the room that I showed off, obviously, right at the beginning, uh, where I fished. I presume it was probably the one that I did at the beginning of uh, the beginning of the stage was probably the fourth one then, and this would be was the fifth one. Um, so we'll fish there again. Hopefully, we'll pick up our gold uh, fish. I've actually got a sneaky suspicion. I haven't actually watched this back, <laughs> which is a bit stupid of me. I've got a sneaky suspicion that I actually don't collect this because it goes a bit too far over to the right, and I can't quite get it without dying or something. So I didn't quite realise it was going to disappear all of a sudden, and by the time I go for it, it's gone. <laughs> So I lost out on how many gold you get for that. Wonderful! Um, but yeah, to get back, indeed, as, as, indeed, as indeed I got across, you could obviously use the phase locket, so that's, that's another option, but um, make use of, you know, make use of the, uh, the shell type enemy, which you can just repeatedly pogo off as well. That seems a, a decent enough option, and indeed would be your only option if you hadn't collected the phase locket. But hopefully by this point in time in the game, you have got it. Just be careful on that little section that on those uh, rising platforms that you don't jump too high into the spikes on the ceiling. Now 
now we come to a kind of dangerous looking area with a moving platform and this rather somewhat irritating enemy that has this kind of green shield around it. Now, as you can see, it will get rid of the shield and um, I kind of feel like I want to take out this thing from a distance with you know, the, uh, the, the flare wand um, just to you know, avoid having to get up close and personal to it, try to shovel it, uh, although when it's got this close it's um, you know, over, the, over the, uh, the solid ground, it's fine, although we want it to be a bit of an annoyance. Um, and indeed all my treasure went in the water, <laughs> down the pit, um, but yeah, I kind of felt like, particularly with the, um, the big gap there, I didn't want to take any liberties there and you know, try and deal with that thing in close combat. The chances are you'll get hit either when it kind of shifts and moves towards you, or by the, when it flings its uh, you know, green goop, whatever it is, it's kind of circling it. Uh, here we see another kind of, I guess kind of, not gimmick per se, but another kind of enemy staple of this, of this uh, level, with these kind of... Um, antenna type things that kind of come out of either the ceiling or the, or the pits or indeed the walls. We'll see that at certain points in time as well. Um, one hit to the head will take them out, but sometimes you don't necessarily want to take them out. Um, or not certainly not straight away anyway. Little, I hesitate to use the word puzzle here because it's reasonably obvious what you should do there. Or just use the bubbles to get, or bubble platforms to get across and then use the enemies to get back. Don't forget this uh, fishing um, area here, which is a little bit obscured by the, you know, the the, the enemy um, to begin with. But um, this is one I don't think you want to miss. No, nope, there's a music sheet in there. Very easy to miss that one, particularly as it's in a hidden area as well. But uh, yeah, you want to get that. There hope there'll be some food in here. Which again, since there was an achievement for get through a level without eating any food. At this point in time, I still hadn't taken the, that much damage, so I was kind of like, well, I'll hold off on eating it for the, eating any for the moment. I don't think it ended up working out so well, but um, for the moment at least, you know, I haven't taken sufficient damage to feel it was warranted. Um, don't worry if you do happen to mess this little bit up here and not get over to the left-hand side, as you'll see now. You don't need to die. It wasn't a pit that you would fall into and die, so yeah. And this bit, I suppose, is a little bit of a puzzle. You just have to kind of work out what order you need to hit these enemies in in order to clear a path. If you just pogo incidentally on the non-head part of these enemies, you'll just continually pogo up and down, and you know, the enemy won't disappear, but it won't equally you won't you won't, you won't clear a path, and you won't be able to get anywhere. Right, chest that's suspiciously in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I kind of felt like it was way, way too easy just to, for, for the game to give you that, so I was expecting something to happen. Admittedly, I wasn't expecting this to happen, <laughs> especially with a, a chase sequence, which can be really annoying, by the way, with the, you know, the, the small fish that this thing kind of spent, sends out at you. And again, you'll see there, I actually used a, a phase, uh, a go of the phase locket uh, just to make sure I got through okay. But um, yeah, if you get hit by those fish, Given the, you know, the chase segment and the scrolling screen and the pits, you're probably going to fall in. So, yeah, it's, um, I say I did use, a, only one, I didn't, again, I didn't abuse the phase locket, but um, yeah, I just kind of felt like the way that, that was timed, that, um, yeah, it was probably a good, idea to, a good idea to do it. Anyway, once you get to a certain point in time, the chase sequence ends, and obviously, and the fish um, reveal, you know, the treasure chest is on the fish's um, antenna, for want of a better word, reveals itself, and you need to hit the pearl in the treasure chest. And once you do so, we actually do three Chester. Eel's alive. I haven't had a ride like that in ages. I think I'm going to be sick. Anyway, I'm about to drop another great deal on you. Want to see? Why, yes, I do. Throwing anchor, an unstoppable arc of destruction. It's okay in limited uh, circumstances. Again, not not really one I would tend to use a whole lot, but uh, it does have its some usages. Particularly for, I guess, enemies that perhaps would be ordinarily out of range of Shovel Knight's normal movements. I did get the, I did get the uh, chicken there because I thought, oh, okay, I've probably taken enough damage now. <laughs> the level's going to be quite difficult. Um, or oh, I would likely to take a lot more damage, and there's, there's, there's one right off the bat um, later on in the level. So, yeah, by that point in time, I thought, oh, let's eat the food. Um, but yeah, the throwing anchor, it's. Yeah, it's, it's, I guess it's probably very useful for enemies that are kind of like above 
Um, or I guess DD below, kind of out of sh Shovel Knight's normal range. But um, ordinarily, that doesn't happen too often in the game, and hence why I don't tend to use it all that much. Yeah, make sure you visit this area. There is a music sheet in that um, uh, treasure chest. And uh, we've introduced as well, initially, before it kind of goes too further, to uh, the, these kind of platforms, um, which is going to be useful because they'll come up later on and it's useful to know how they work. Now, I realise I forgot to, uh, or I just didn't fish in. There was a little sparkly area there. I kind of, I'm not quite sure why I missed it. I can't, I, I know I wasn't missing anything important. There was a music sheet already in there. We already fish, actually fished a music sheet from this level anyway. And there was one in the treasure chest. So I knew it wasn't going to be absolutely fundamental. But still, I really should have fished there just to you know, show it off. But um, so I, I don't believe, i say it would have either been a, well, either been a goldfish or another um, red trout or fish. So not terribly important, but nevertheless, I should have showed it off. You can see that I've already taken a whole mess of damage just after having eaten that uh, chicken, so yeah, it was definitely the right thing to do. <laughs> and here we can see where these platforms come into play. I mean, it's reasonably obvious how they're going to work anyway, but I say, just having a um, another demonstration before we get into having to use them a lot of the time is always kind of helpful. You, you obviously shovel the uh, the red kind of little um, ball on them, and that sends the ones flying. Don't get caught out with this bit. There's no red ball here to hit or whatever, but... So the um, platforms just kind of rock it off themselves. But that definitely caught me out first time I played it. I was not expecting that. And I was also not expecting to completely mess up my jump there. Hooray! Um, but uh, yeah, definitely caught me out first time I was playing this because I was not expecting those to fire automatically. But obviously, you need to be a little bit careful here just to um, make sure you land on the, on the rocket platforms. It can be a bit trickier than you might think. This guy I hate. Probably one of the... Maybe the throwing anchor would have been good here. Maybe I should have stood at the top here and used the throwing anchor to kill this to kill this uh, git. But um, he is very, very annoy annoyingly placed. I hate the, the arcing of these anchors. They just always seem to be right where you don't want them to be. He's in a really annoying area where you could accidentally go too far to the left, whack the... Uh, the, the red, you know, the red, the red dot, or red, sorry, the red ball on the, on the on the platform, send it flying off and fall into a pit. And uh, I nearly messed up there as well, by the way, by m miscalculating the height of the platform when I shot it off. But fortunately, I had the wherewithal just to hold right and make sure I still made the, landed safely. But um, yeah, nearly messed that up. And here we've got some uh, anchors, which when you get sufficiently close to them, drop down. You need to make sure you're not standing on them when they drop all the way down, otherwise you'll fall into the pit and to your death. And we do like to put this uh, little annoying enemy in areas, particularly where there are lots of bottomless pits and whatnot. So, yeah, again, I don't necessarily like doing multiple kind of phase lockets and things like that, but in certain circumstances they are certainly what I would call justified, and this is certainly one of them. And I even didn't lose my treasure there, that was awesome. Totally planning on that. Well, totally planned that when I when I killed when I killed the enemy. I had to make sure it was just going to keep my treasure still on screen. Um, with this anchor section, just make sure you don't go too quickly. It should be reasonably obvious you know, when or how 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 quickly you need to you know move or when to hold back. Uh, and make, try and make sure you stay on the upper path as well. Um, you do get to this little area, which. Admittedly, perhaps doesn't seem to have like too much in terms of value, but there is a lot of treasure in that chest, as you can see. But um, you do have to deal with this really annoying anchor knight, um, and those kind of um, shells at the top, which are just continually spitting out projectiles, which are always in the way as well. So yeah. And just to top things off, we also have one of these annoying anchor knights down here as well. And it also does that that thing where it um, puts its shield up to stop you from attacking from above. So again, it's a somewhat decent strategy, although this guy completely kicks my ass. Um, <laughs> is to try and do is to try and do that, to try and pogo him, make him put his shield up and then attack him from the side. But yeah, man, oh man, I hate those anchor knights. Coming up toward the end of the level now. Um, might as well use the um, Shell enemies to completely you know, just clear the screen. Fortunately, we do have some food and it's a chicken which will refill all my health, so that was uh, sorely needed. But uh, yeah, once you've cleared the path and wait for and waited for this enemy to get out of the way, so you don't take unnecessary hit, we come to pretty much the final screen. We've got a little 
platform ride section where we also have to shovel the um, walls in our way. Um, make sure you, it's not too bad, just make sure you shovel reasonably early, otherwise you'll find that the platform just, you know, obviously slides you into the platforms and you'll get knocked back, either into a pit or on the spikes, and that's not fun. But there we are, last checkpoint of the stage, and here is the boss. Treasure Knight. My gems, my vessel, my ocean, your very presence tarnishes. You are to lay claim to the sea itself? Your greed knows no bounds, Treasure Knight. Your hands are no less dirty. Even now, others are paying for your avarice. Let us duel. Winner take all. So, Treasure Knight. He has a lot of um, anchors that he fully kind of fired. Or he has an obviously anchor on his, um, on his arm, which he just um, fires off. Um, Reasonably frequently, he does this attack where he goes up to the, um, the the ceiling and pulls an anchor down. He also has this very irritating attack where he makes the gold from the floor um, come up in a wave, which deals pretty decent damage, has to be said. Um, all of his attacks do, do seem to do quite a lot of damage, and they are somewhat annoying or difficult to kind of know what he's doing. This one in particular, if you're kind of in the process of having bounced on him or pogoed off him, I find that attack really difficult to avoid just from a timing point of view. He also does this attack where he throws a, um, a chest in the middle of the screen and uh, you know, it sends out a whirlpool and tries to, and tries to suck you in. Um, if you get caught in that, I think you take some damage. You also actually take, he also actually makes you lose some treasure, so he steals treasure for you, from you. Um, I also decided at this point in time, because I didn't necessarily think I was going to, well, as you'll see here, I didn't actually need to do it, but just from the point of A, showing it off, because I don't tend to use it all that much, um, before anyway, and there's an achievement for actually using all three icons. I thought, well, I'm a little bit low on health, let's just not take any, ch absolutely take no chances, and I'll use the um, Invincible for 10 seconds icon. But I didn't, I, I was pretty confident I wouldn't need it, but yeah, in the essence of showing it or showing everything off, there it is. And so, as this is the first of um, three nights in this section of the map or whatever we don't have a um, dream sequence we just uh, fall asleep and then wake up presumably again next morning we'll do our usual ring roll of putting out the campfire just to be a good citizen and we will exit a couple of locks go away we have a mysterious person that suddenly appeared on the map, but that's going to be awful this time. Next part we're going to be kind of tying up a lot of loose ends, we're going to be dealing with a few kind of these random people that suddenly appear on the map. We're also going to be checking out the armour outpost, which is that little village that you can see with the blimp kind of hovering above it. We're going to do some nice kind of things in there. So yeah, this is all part five. Hopefully you'll join me next time for part six. Cheerio!